Hello, so I wanted to do a video um, quickly on sort of Gen 1 versus Gen 2 night vision units. And this isn't going to be a video showing them. I'm going to do that at a different stage, sort of, you know, showing an example between Gen 1 versus Gen 1 Plus versus, you know, Gen 2 versus Gen 2 Plus. What I wanted to do in this video is basically make people consider the fact that some of the quality of night vision comes down to the optics on the actual device, not just how good, the, you know, the night vision tube is inside it. Obviously, the be-all and end-all of night vision is the, um, you know, tube or if it's got a micro-channel plate and everything else, which obviously makes a Gen 1 different than a Gen 2 and all that sort of stuff. However, a lot of it will come down to the quality of the optics used. The more light, obviously, the lens lets in, the objective lens, the better the night vision will work. Because if you had two identical units of two identical tubes in there pretty much working, you know, simultaneously, the one with a bigger and better lens on will work better as a night vision unit because it lets more light in. So... Very kindly, Stug bought these two units from me, um, the Mini Ox and the um, one I can never remember the name of, that's basically like a Russian tube made into more of a commercialised design, so thank you to him, and um, we'll be posting those to him soon. Now, this is basically like, this particular one is like a brand new Gen 1, I think it's even technically a Gen 1 Plus unit, but the problem with this unit is, it's very compact and nice to have in your hands, but the issue is that because it's a compact unit, um, it doesn't let much light in, even obviously when you take the cover off. So because it doesn't let much light in, yeah, it's obviously, you can tell it amplifies light, but it's not all that amazing. With an IR light on, it's fine, but you know, it's not a very big optic to look through, as you can see, and it's not got a very big objective lens. Um, so out of the two units, on paper, the Minox, I think, has a better spec sheet than this one does. I think they actually use the same Soviet amplifier tube in both of them. However, because this one has a much bigger objective lens as you can see the bigger objective lens on this one uh means that you actually get a much better job of um light coming in so let me just close that one back up actually they're not turned on so that doesn't matter so then of course you've got gen 1 units like the top tier gen 1 plus is something like the pulsar um you know and again the objective lens on the pulsar isn't huge um but the reason i think the pulsar does quite well at least is because you know it's a very good unit so it overcomes the fact that it's got a small, you know, objective lens. However, Hype let me borrow a um, German Gen 1 Plus unit, which performed way better than the Pulsar, simply because of the fact it had a much better quality optic at the far end of it, I think was the main reason. I know it was a different, you know, tube in there and everything, but on paper I don't think it should be that much better than what the Pulsar had, but simply having a much nicer German optic, you know, at the front end made a big difference. And that brings us to units like um, the Cyclops. Because you can put your own camera lenses on there, you can get these to perform quite significantly good for either a Gen 1 or a Gen 1 Plus unit, whatever they are, because of the fact that, you know, you can choose what optic you want to put on there within reason, because it's an obsolete sort of camera thread. But, you know, these Cyclops units are surprisingly good for the price for a Gen 1 unit. Um, which is one of the reasons I want to keep the Cyclops, and also because it's easy to film through, because of the fact that, you know, it's, um, you're able to put your own lenses on it and play about with the unit that way. Whereas with obviously a lot of night vision units, you can't really do that unless you're dismantling and building an entire unit. So, the unit I think that proves to be the biggest example of this is the IM101. You see there we've got a nice coated lens, and it's a massive objective lens on the IM101. And the IM101 is an early, I've done some videos on it, um, early British Gen 2 um, device. It's more of a spotter scope than it is, you know, one that you'd actually have on a helmet due to the size and weight of it. But that massive objective lens means that you actually get a really, really good picture and light amplification for a gen, early Gen 2, you know, unit. Because it's got a very good optic combined, you know, combined with early good Gen 2 tubes, which means that it probably performs better, I would imagine, than quite a lot of later Gen 2 units that, you know, are a lot more compact. Now, the best unit I've got is this one, the Chinese is a NVVT tube, I think, if I remember the name right, that I bought from Hype. And again, this one, as you can see, doesn't have all that big an objective lens. Um, probably a very similar size lens to the Pulsar, I imagine, but obviously... This is a Gen 2 Plus unit, so that helps a lot. But, you know, for example, if this unit had the objective lens of that size of, you know, the IM101, then this would be fantastically better. It's a very good unit. It's still better than, you know, being a Gen 2 Plus. It's still better than the IM101 as an early Gen 2. But, you know, if this had a bigger objective lens on, you know, it'd work even better. And similarly, if that unit had something the size of that on it, 
that would probably be better than the Pulsar, for example. Does this make sense? Hopefully this makes sense. But yeah, the point is with night vision units, it's not just down to generation, you know. Like it's, and there's differences between lots of tubes in single generations and there's also lots of factors between like quality of the electronics and quality of the optics. It doesn't just come down to the price tag on my night vision unit is bigger than the price tag on yours. Therefore, I've got a better unit, which sadly you see a lot in the comments. You know, you have to be very careful if you're buying night vision that you don't get ripped off as well. Just simply because of the fact that some people do not price it according to what it's actually worth. Um, you know, either because they're ignorant of the actual real value of the units or they want to make a massive markup on the profit. Um, you know, and sent. So, for example, this unit was the cheapest night vision unit I've ever bought. And I sold it to Stug at the price I bought it, about £30. And that was a bid. I can't remember if it was a bid or buy it now on eBay. The seller knew nothing about it other than the fact it powered on, you know, and they could see through it, you know. And thankfully they hadn't, you know, aimed it at the lights or anything when demonstrating it worked. And this particular unit has turned out to be really good, just simply because it's a good Gen 1 Plus Soviet tube in there, combined with, you know, a good quality optic at the far end. So it has the problem sometimes where it's a bit too zoomed in and you can never get it to focus quite right on something you want to look at. But in terms of light amplification, it's very good, you know. So hopefully that's explained a lot of things in night vision, or maybe, you know, a bit. But it comes down to more than just the actual generation of the unit. You know, you really do have to think about the quality of the optics and size of the optics on there as well, because they do have a massive factor of how much light gets into the unit. Because, you know, you could have the best tube in the world, but if you had a really, really, really bad lens on it that barely allowed light in, it's not going to be able to do much with that little bit of light coming in. So, you know, there's always that factor.